Elon Musk's excessive ambition for the Cybertruck has generated considerable backlash, making it susceptible to being surpassed by competitors like the Ford F-150 or Rivian in the near future. For example, the F-150 Lightning has already sold more than 11,000 units this year. When we look at Cybertruck, how many have been sold? 10, 100, or 1,000? The quantity is too low, coupled with a challenging pricing structure. The difficulties in production are a fundamental factor leading to a series of issues, including price increases, delays, and insufficient quantities to meet the eager demand for this pickup truck in the market. So, what problems are Cybertruck facing with its unsophisticated strategy? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, we ask that you show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. Difficulties in the Cybertruck production line could result in the delay of a series of leaked vehicles, such as the Model 2, RoboTaxi, or Tesla semi-sleeper cab version. Assuming that to date, at least 2,000 Cybertrucks have been produced with a quantity of 1.5 million units reserved, initially more than 2 million, but the number may have decreased when customers learned about its price. So, when will Tesla be able to deliver in time for such a large quantity because Musk has repeatedly admitted that the Cybertruck is difficult to produce? Now, we'll find out the current status of this off-road vehicle. What problems does Tesla encounter with Cybertruck production? If we were to write about the process of Tesla building the Cybertruck, we think it could absolutely make a TV series. If in previous episodes we mainly highlighted this pickup, this episode will be something different, which is its biggest drawback. The truth is, over the past four years immersed in darkness, this pickup truck has consistently strived for improvement every day. This is demonstrated by the Foundation Series that Tesla is currently offering with a range of premium editions. We'll discuss this further after learning about the current production challenges of the Cybertruck. Indeed, Tesla is grappling with the production line of this vehicle and pushing the speed up to 150,000 or 250,000 is something the company cannot achieve at this stage. It may also not be achievable before 2026, as Musk promised, given that the Cybertruck demands a significant number of machines and solutions from hard freaking stainless. We also know that HFS 304L stainless steel is an alloy that's five times more difficult to machine than regular steel because of its hardness of up to 90 HRB. In 2019, Elon Musk very confidently introduced this alloy with promising uses such as anti-corrosion and durability, especially after everyone saw Franz's sledgehammer test. But the question is whether Elon Musk expected it to be much more difficult to produce. How does stainless steel pose a challenge to the automotive industry? Admittedly, stainless steel gives Cybertruck a unique character compared to any other pickup truck on the market because they are mostly made from conventional steel or aluminum. But it's stainless steel that is the leading reason why customers have to wait a few more years to get their orders. Looking at the history of stainless steel in the automotive industry, there's not too much information about it because there are simply not many manufacturers who dare to take the risks with this difficult to produce metal. The most specific examples are Ford and DeLorean. You may not know that Ford has researched stainless steel for its cars, but the manufacturer has recognized the difficulties and challenges in processing this alloy. So Ford has never put it into production. So now we have simple aluminum Ford cars. A clear example to show the difficulty of manufacturing vehicles with this alloy is the DeLorean. This company mass-produced stainless steel cars in 1982 to receive the bitter end of bankruptcy even before producing 10,000 units. So, why doesn't Tesla learn from these manufacturers about the limitations of stainless steel? Actually, yes, Tesla has long researched this material. And it is possible that the manufacturer encountered many challenges in finding ways to bend it without cracking like an orange peel, and then finally came up with an effective bending method. Most effectively, this method is called airbending by Tesla engineers. Is airbending a breakthrough for stainless steel? According to Sawyer Merritt, a manufacturing process known as airbending where they float the tool on an air hockey-like table device and blow really high pressure air so that tool floats over the surface and isn't actually touching the surface when it's bending it. This method is not widely known among manufacturers or they simply lack experience with it. 
The use of airbending demonstrates that Tesla has extensively researched this alloy, focusing on its nature, advantages, and structure to determine the best machining practices. With its origami design, the Cybertruck also creates challenges for itself when we consider the production line. Its unique design has required Tesla to design a self-contained production line, unlike manufacturing conventional pickup trucks like the F-150 or Rivian, which have similar designs. The similarity in design among conventional trucks allows manufacturers to learn from existing production processes and not have to invent entirely new manufacturing processes or separate assembly sequences. The distinctive design of the Cybertruck necessitates a different approach, leading to a bespoke production line and assembly process. On the contrary, Cybertruck's production line comprises numerous unique steps, particularly involving press machines designed for stainless steel. These machines cannot remain intact after multiple molding processes, and they are highly expensive, costing millions of dollars. Moreover, they are prone to corrosion over time when working with stainless steel. Currently, Tesla also lacks an abundance of 9,000-ton Gigapress machines for the Cybertruck at the Texas Gigafactory. After all, building the Cybertruck is not difficult, but making and acquiring the tools and machines that can produce it is. Now, they've built what's needed to bend and assemble stainless steel. But is it that easy? We realize that not only stainless steel, the electrical system also has a significant impact to affect 50% of the current number of Cybertrucks. As of now, only the Cybertruck and a small number of Model Y rear-wheel drive variants integrate the 4680 battery technology, and Tesla has produced approximately 25 million cells as of December. Each 123-kilowatt-hour battery pack for the Cybertruck requires 1,366 4680 cells. And assuming all the cells are allocated for the pickup truck, we would have around 18,000 units produced. However, in reality, the number is likely much lower, as the cells need to be distributed among various Tesla models and devices. The progress of product development is always governed by the components it contains, and the Cybertruck is no exception. In the upcoming time, Tesla focuses on ramping up production of the 4680 Gen 2 cells across multiple manufacturing facilities is understandable. Many opinions also suggest that the difficulty in manufacturing the Cybertruck stems from Tesla's use of a 48-volt electrical system instead of the more common 12-volt in other models. This perspective is accurate. Upgrading to a higher voltage system fundamentally changes the game for a vehicle, impacting all electric-related components such as lighting systems, brakes, steer-by-wire cameras, and other systems, all of which need to be redesigned for alignment. A higher 48 voltage means lower current, reducing heat generated during transmission, allowing for thinner wiring, which in turn reduces weight and the need for copper, thereby cutting costs. Faced with the difficulties in producing large quantities of pickup trucks, Tesla seems to have a strategy when launching the Cybertruck Foundation Series. Why is the Cybertruck Foundation Series worth considering? Exactly. It's worth considering because it allows you to receive the vehicle earlier with more features, albeit at a higher cost. Customers purchasing this limited edition will receive their vehicles as early as December 2023 through March of next year, with delivery starting for customers in Texas and California first. Tesla is currently ramping up production for this edition, while buyers of other variants may have to wait longer in receiving their vehicles. Specifically, the Tesla Cybertruck Foundation Series 2024 is now considered a commemorative edition marking the vehicle's launch, equipped with all the convenience features. However, it's important to note that this edition is limited to only a thousand units and is available for fortunate customers who make early reservations. Tesla seems to be reserving these initial limited edition Cybertrucks for employees who live near Gigafactory, Texas, or possibly the Fremont factory in Northern California as the email notifications indicate that residents in these two states are given priority. With the Cybertruck Foundation Series, customers will purchase it at a price of $199,990 for the tri-motor variant, so the higher price is understandable. In addition to the base price of the pickup, customers also have to bear additional costs, such as a destination fee of $1,995 and an order fee of $250. After all said and done, the total for the experience is $122,135. Many questions arise about whether they can come to the Tesla factory to pick up the car, and the manufacturer will not charge a destination fee, but according to the information we receive from Texas customers, 
it is not feasible and you're required to pay the fee. In addition, the Foundation Series does not include a range extender, so you'll have to spend about $15,000 to $16,000 more to get this perfection. So, what features does the Foundation Series add to customers to convince them to spend such a large amount of money? In addition to parameters, range, and performance of the tri-motor variant, when spending more than $120 grand, customers will receive accessories or features unique to the Foundation Series. First, there are additions to ensure that the Cybertruck Foundation Series is distinct from other variants based on three features. Limited edition configuration, laser etched Foundation Series badge, and Foundation Series cabin graphite. Your pickup truck will no longer be referred to by common name like Cyber Beast or Dual Motor. Instead, it'll have an exclusive configuration signifying its limited nature and value. Through the badge, Tesla has outlined the differentiation for each variant right from the most easily recognizable exterior changes on the front mud flaps, hoping it will be as impressive as the Cyberbeast badge or even more upscale. The Foundation Series graphic could be an elegant element integrated into the cabin design with white accents on the seating, dashboard, or door panels. It may be a larger and more prominent graphic showcasing the Foundation Series brand or a specific design theme that adds a particularly luxurious touch undoubtedly corresponding to what customers are paying for. With the Foundation Series, this pickup will have 20-inch wheels and 35-inch tires to match all-terrain as well as increase the Cybertruck's off-road capabilities because the traction is much higher. But it also means that the range will be significantly reduced to 301 miles for the Cyberbeast and 318 miles for the dual motor. In addition, an off-road light bar, premium accessories, power share home backup, and mobile connector are also included in this premium option. The Cybertruck will be much more impressive thanks to this unique light strip that accompanies a range of premium accessories in the Tesla store, as we've long appreciated its power share feature. Hopefully, with the two additions that Tesla offers, power share will be fully utilized by customers to have a closer look at the mobile home. The enticing feature always comes last, and that is the FSD beta capability. This feature will be pushed to the vehicle after delivery through a wireless software update. FSD will include traffic-aware cruise control, auto steer on the highway, automatic lane changes, automatic parking, summon and smart summon, traffic light and stop sign control, as well as full self-driving within city streets. However, there is still no information about which version of FSD Tesla will install for this foundation series. Overall, with a price tag of over $122,000 for the Cybertruck Tri-Motor Foundation Series, it seems quite justified given the array of features that Tesla may take a long time to provide for other variants. This presents an opportunity for the luckiest 1,000 customers to experience it earlier than those who will have to wait over a year to get it. For customers with a lower budget, the Cyberbeast Dual Motor Foundation Series at $99,990 might be worth considering. This variant is also highly appealing, as it comes with some advantages over the tri-motor, and having a longer range is certainly a definite plus. Since Tesla introduced the initial concepts of this wildly innovative new pickup truck, it's evident that there are significant challenges. Therefore, Tesla will have to demonstrate that they are a manufacturer with exceptional production methods and unmatched technology to produce a few or many of these stainless steel body trucks. In the coming time, the Cybertruck is sure to be an intriguing pickup truck as it becomes more widely available. It'll be fascinating to see how all these elements play out in the production process, how long the Cybertruck will endure, and whether the price can potentially decrease in the coming years or not. The realization of the Cybertruck's full potential seems entirely feasible once Tesla successfully navigates the challenges in manufacturing and enhances its production line for mass production, especially in the processing of stainless steel. It's essential to bear in mind that Tesla is adept at creating machines that create machines, the very essence of whether a product is efficiently manufactured or not. Overcoming these initial hurdles will likely pave the way for the Cybertruck to establish itself as a remarkable and enduring presence in the automotive landscape. Only time will tell how Tesla's innovative approach and commitment to excellence will shape the future of this groundbreaking pickup truck. After the initial delivery of 10 units to early customers, the next wave of deliveries is set to take place in California and Texas this month before expanding to other states next year. 
There's still no information about when the Cybertruck might make its way to Canada, but last week, the Ontario government announced the inclusion of the Cybertruck in the list of eligible vehicles for the Green License Plate Program. Hopefully, we'll see more of this pickup truck on the roads in the coming year, in what promises to be an explosive year for the market. So, what's your perspective on the challenges that Tesla's currently facing with the Cybertruck production line? Do you have a positive opinion about the Cybertruck Foundation series? We hope you'll have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button and join our Tesla Car World family by subscribing to the channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.